confessing all Lent, and now we are in this great season of Easter, so we will begin uh, the service with a thanksgiving for baptism. So I invite you to please rise and call your attention to the baptismal font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's burdened rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life.
Enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. The Lord's praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, bless the reading of your word. Make it come alive in our midst. Amen. The first reading is from Acts 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possession. But everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Second reading is from 1 John chapter 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse from us all unrighteousness. unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. According to John, the twentieth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through that, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning, friends, here at Prince of Peace and in our online community. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's gospel paints the picture of a lived experience of those who love Jesus the most, dealing with their lives in the aftermath of the horror of his crucifixion and death, the desolation of his absence. As we meet today, we have had our Easter moment, but they have not yet had theirs. John's Gospel invites us to see and hear Jesus in the company of the disciples and for ourselves. Maybe we too can locate ourselves in this story, in the grief, in the shock, the trauma, the disappointment of it all. Perhaps we too need a fresh encounter with the risen Lord. For the disciples, the warmth and the intimacy of the Last Supper is a shattered memory in the shadow of the destruction of the crucifixion. There's a sense of bewilderment in their grief. Mary's astonishment at the empty tomb the disciples' fear palpable inside of a locked room. It is overwhelming. How are they to move forward from here? In this gospel, Thomas needs a sign, and so often we do too. We too need a sign. Signs are prominent in John's gospel always pointing to and revealing the identity of Jesus as the Son of God and the Messiah. Today, signs show up as strategies, ways to hack our lives, Instagram reels, master classes, memes and quotes. The memification of meaning attempts to encourage us or prod us to move forward. But the thing about framing our disappointment and despair in this prepackaged way is that we risk never fully feeling, expressing, or integrating our emotions. We may miss, or worse, bypass Jesus. We may move on to the next thing or even go round and round, but not actually move forward. In the wake of traumatic events and ongoing experiences of trauma, there is no pat to-do list, no hack 
no meme, no platitude that will ease the suffering or that will reorient that which has been deeply disoriented. In her book, Fractured Ground, Princeton Theological Seminary professor Kimberly Wagner explores the context of trauma in pastoral ministry. The word trauma is derived from the Greek term that means wound. She describes how trauma, particularly collective trauma, is an unavoidable reality in our time. We experience personally and communally natural disasters, violence, war, disease. Our devices continually update us on struggles and horrors around the world. It's all around us. Like the disciples, we too are living in a time of crisis. Professor Wagner describes how the aftermath of trauma leaves communities stripped of their sense of well-being. Brokenness impedes the capacity to imagine a way forward. We might find ourselves asking, where is God in all of this? The doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked. The disciples were suspended by fear in a place of self-sequestering behind that locked door. They lingered in that fear over those days. I wonder how many times they replayed the last days with Jesus in their minds. The horror of the crucifixion the fright of what happened and what could happen next. They were utterly disoriented, frozen in a state of fear of all that was happening around them and all that was happening within them. Can we imagine that feeling behind a locked door? Trying to process all that happened? We too can be locked in by our experiences, our losses and our wounds. These are, after all, disorienting times. We reach for help to feel better, to do better, but we are wounded. And how do we move forward from here? I did my chaplain training at a level one trauma hospital where we responded to all trauma medical alerts and all codes. I stood alongside families holding space and bearing witness as a reminder of God's presence and the patient's humanity. As I silently prayed, in the trauma bay or at the bedside, my role was and is to meet the family and help them in their disorientation. When I approach families, what I find most striking is the unbearability of their separation from their wounded loved ones. Waiting is excruciating as the minutes feel like hours. Almost every time I hear, I want to see them. Bringing families into the trauma bay, I have seen every physical and emotional response. Upon seeing and hearing, I witnessed those who could not process the scene or make sense of the words. Some freeze, completely shutting down, or fight, becoming angry or aggressive. Others retreat and take flight because the reality is too much to bear. This can't be happening. This can't be real. These are trauma responses. In those moments, our brain and body connection is affected, and the ability to regulate thoughts, actions, and emotions is impaired. I am often asked, how do we move forward from here? When Mary Magdalene saw that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, she ran for help. She did not know where Jesus was. She exclaimed, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. I do not know where they have taken him. Her heart cry, I want to see him. The angels who Mary encounters do not try to make explanations or address the events of the tomb, but rather they have focused their attention on her. Woman, why are you weeping? They focus on her fright and her broken heart. When Jesus asks, Woman, 
why are you weeping, and calls her by name. The fog of her trauma clears in the presence of the risen Christ. Peace in that moment. Peace in the presence of Jesus. And peace in the witness and the word that she carried to the disciples. Mary moves forward with the message of Christ. But after receiving that message, the disciples remain locked in that room. Was Mary's testimony not enough for them? Or was it there that their loss and their separation was too much for her words to break through? Perhaps they could not process or make sense of the words. Perhaps they were not able to fully receive that message for themselves. And just as Jesus stood alongside Mary, he entered and stood among the disciples, saying, Peace be with you, and showed him, showed them his wounds. It was then, in that breakthrough, in that peace of Christ, that the disciples rejoiced when they heard and saw the Lord. Mary needed to hear Jesus call her name. The disciples needed to see Jesus. The moment shared in that room at the Last Supper is now. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. And just as he promised in that room at the Last Supper, he breathes the breath of new life, the Holy Spirit. What a powerful and decisive moment. A beautiful moment of reunion and hope in his abiding presence. But Thomas was not there. He was not with his brothers for that beautiful moment. He was not with Jesus on that night. And so when the other disciples told him all that had happened, he needed his own experience with Jesus. His own evidence. One week passes. One week for Thomas and perhaps those minutes felt like hours on those days felt like weeks. But now they are together. And Jesus comes. Once again, he stands among them and tells them, peace be with you. This is for Thomas, for what he missed, for whom he misses, for what he needs. I want to see him. In all their broken places, and in all of our broken places, places of fear, <coughs> places of trauma, of loss and of disappointment, Jesus comes and offers what is needed, what we need, an encounter with the risen Christ. Jesus who lingers, Jesus who calls us by name, Jesus who comes back for us, Jesus who gives the gift of himself, who gives us his peace. This is the great grace of of Jesus, who is entering our wounds and invites us to see, to hear, and to touch, who invites us into his resurrected wound, transforming our fear into rejoicing. He meets us right where we are and with what we need and fills our emptiness with his presence. He gives us his peace. The epistle today testifies, saying, We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. All that was seen and heard and touched concerning the revelation of God in Christ Jesus. Fellowship with God through Christ. Eternal life. Indeed, we can rejoice in this Easter moment. Jesus commissions the disciples to continue the work of God sent for him to do. The disciples' mission and the church's mission today, our mission today, is to carry forward the mission of revealing God in Christ Jesus. He calls us forward, for it is with his peace, by his spirit, 
and with forgiveness that we move forward together. The epistle goes on and calls us close. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And, he, and his is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The whole world. By this good news and great grace, we are freed from the confines of our locked doors, our fears, and our trauma. That which is hardened is softened, and that which confines is freed. We are freed to move forward together. Filled with the peace of Christ, enlivened by the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit, and commissioned by God. Acts shows us how life together was for the early church, a vision for this community invited into the inbreaking of the kingdom of God. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. One heart and soul. The text says there was not a needy person among them. This is a community of fellowship with God. And this is a community of fellowship with God. A community that reveals God in Jesus through how they care for one another. This was and this is a community in a time of crisis, breaking through heartbreak and loss and famine and tragedy and violence and war, declaring God's good news and witnessing God's great grace. They move and we move forward and flourish together. The commission to continue Christ's mission of revealing God's life-giving purposes in this world, in this community, in this house, in our homes, and in hospital rooms, is an invitation into Christ's healing, peace, and joy. This is resurrection living. We are people of resurrection. Let us be encouraged, friends, to meet one another right where we are, <coughs> to see, to hear, to know and to be known, to offer God's peace, to be in his presence, and to transform our wounds into rejoicing. Amen.
one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true to God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Risen Christ, you stand among us in the shadows of our time. As we move through every sorrow and trial of this life, uphold us in the glorious presence of your risen Son, in whom we share resurrection. Restore us to the fullness of life, forever free to be your people, God of grace. For the Church, that through the gift of the Spirit, we recognize God's presence with us and profess with Thomas my Lord and my God, God of grace. Hear, hear. This week we pray for justice and peace among nations where war and violence rage, especially Palestine and Israel, Russia and Ukraine, Myanmar, Iraq, Haiti, and South Sudan. For relief and recovery efforts following the earthquake in Taiwan. For all aid groups who risk their own safety as they deliver food and supplies, especially World Central Kitchen as they grieve the killing of seven workers in Gaza. For all people in recovery from alcohol abuse in this Alcohol Awareness Month. For journalists in places where the press's freedom is threatened, and for consumers of the news in places where misinformation is rife. For the wonder of creation, especially in light of the earthquake on Friday and the solar eclipse tomorrow. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all who are questioning their faith or God's presence in their lives, that the Spirit will guide them to new insights and help them recognize God's presence through the witness of Christians' love and service. God of grace, Hear our prayer. for healing. That the Spirit will renew the gift of life in all who are sick, discouraged, struggling with addictions or weakness that comes with aging. We name this day Matthew, Charlie, Pat, Nathan, Lisa, all on our prayer list, and those we name before you now. God of grace, accept our gratitude, O oh God, for the lives of those who now rest in you, especially Dietrich Bonhoeffer and all whose lives have been given in faithfulness to the gospel. Grant us your peace amid our fears. 
We remember this day the family of Robert Moore, brother to Roger, and beyond Genso, friend of the Moors, as we also now name the saints of our lives. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. We pray, oops, let's just go to the peace here, sorry about that. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share God's peace. God's peace. God's, God's peace be with you. Carl Freak. God's peace be with you, Paul. God's peace.
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
lives. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome again to worship uh, as we now move into this season of Easter, a week of Easter, seven weeks of Easter to proclaim the glorious resurrection. A uh, number of announcements that I want to share with the uh, congregation while I think of it. The flowers are here for you to take home. Please take them home. Uh, even if you did not order one, uh, and if you did order one, please take what you ordered. Uh, but there, all these flowers are meant to be planted in your garden. So, so please take a, a lily or a hydrangea or there's a daffodil, uh, and we can you know, spread the joy around in our in our in our homes and gardens. So please, please do that today. Um, there is no adult class today, but next Sunday we have a very special occasion with our racial justice team sponsoring two indigenous women to, to share their, their, their personal stories. There's a big uh, 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 flyer in the bulletin. I call your attention to that. That will be during the adult forum next Sunday, 1045. We actually are going to be in the community room for that presentation. Sarah Manning wanted me to uh, announce the seminary choir. They have a spring best for service. That is next Sunday at the seminary, at the seminary chapel, next Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Speaking of Princeton Seminary, on the 27th of April, I guess three weeks away, uh, Prince of Peace, or I should actually say the house next door, is hosting a conference from the Center of Contemplative Leadership at the seminary. They are hosting this conference, Prayer as Resistance. It fits in perfectly with our racial justice, with reconciling in Christ, with the house next door. And it's a big deal. We're expecting a lot of people. Uh, first of all, we do need helpers, uh, just hands on deck. To accommodate uh, those who are coming, there's a sign-up outside of the church office. But if you don't want to help and think, I kind of like to go to this, uh, Prince of Peace can come free of charge. Uh, you just, I, I'm not sure, maybe uh, we talked to Pastor Dale and just let her know that you would like to take in this conference. It's Saturday, April 27th, and I think it begins around 9 o'clock here at the church. Speaking of the seminary, I guess there's a lot of seminary announcements today, uh, but coming up two weeks from today, uh, and this is building off of our adult class during Lent, the Theology of Creation, we are taking a field trip out to the Farminary. The Farminary is a 21-acre farm uh, located on Princeton Pike, not too far out of town in Princeton, and it is the seminary's farm. And they are, it is a working farm, as it is a laboratory for students to come and learn about theology and land and creation. And we are going to go out there, uh, Sarah Manning, our, our field ed student, is going to give us a tour. We're going to have a potluck uh, picnic. There's, there's uh, facilities out there for uh, picnic tables and such. And then um, we are hoping to end with campfire. Um, so that's a week, two weeks from today, 5 p.m. will begin. Hopefully it won't rain. If it does rain, though, they have a barn, so we'll, we'll, we, will, uh, we will still gather rain or shine. I think those are my announcements. Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, let us rise for the benefit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, the God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope. Bless you now and always. Amen. 
Amen.